Hey guys, welcome back to Music Talk with John. Today I'm at a friend's house. This is Scott. Hey, how are you doing? We're going to try out a couple different things. He has uh, Tears for Fears loaded up on CD. And he has a Nora Jones over there. I brought a couple things to check out. Um, a jazz record, Lou Donaldson Blues Walk, which is killer. This is one of my favorite jazz albums. We figured we'd try some rock with uh, the Beatles. This is the uh, remaster that came out last year, remastered by Giles Martin. Then we'll try a little Mofi One Step, and then we'll do a little opening. Prince the Revolution. Yeah, it's uh, from the Purple Rains War. I think they were yeah, Syracuse, New York, 1985. So a three uh, LP set. So we're gonna open it up and listen to some of it tonight. Okay, so we're gonna try a couple things out, you know, YouTube rules. So we're gonna start one and give it a listen, but I'm gonna have to cut you off because you know what? I don't want them taking money off this one. One day when I monetize, I don't want them <laughs> having it. Now my walk and talks are different. So you wanna start with the CD? Sure, yeah. So this is the newer, the newest Tears for Fears, The Tipping Point. Which is excellent. You have yes. any favorites off that yet? Or have you still absorbing yeah, it? Yeah, still absorbing that one, probably. I probably their first song actually is the favorite. So I'll play a little bit of that. Uh, that was the song No Small Thing, the first track off the CD. Sounds yeah. quite good. Yeah, it sounds very good on there. And they you can tell they you still hear Tears for Fears in there, but you can tell how they matured a little mm -hmm. bit too. So Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so that's I love that album. I'm starting to have a little Tears for Fears crush lately. I don't know what the deal is, but all of a sudden I'm like, just give me some Tears for Fears. Where like when I was young and Shout came out, I don't know if it was just too mature for me, and because they always wrote like pretty intellectual mm -hmm. lyrics and mm -hmm. things like that. So I just didn't get into it. But as I got older, and especially um, Seeds of Love, I think that's the first one that brought me like, yeah, Tears yeah. for Fears. It sounded trippy and you know, so. <laughs> But yeah, that's a great album. So that sounded really good. Um, and then you've got Nora Jones over here. Sure. Was that a, a Target exclusive? Is that this is, yeah, this is their Target exclusive. We, I just got this a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I'm, sorry, I didn't bring it over here. I'll okay. play the first track, the uh, her infamous track, Don't, Don't Know Why. That so, is, one of them are trending right now. Um, might be Don't Know Why. Everybody and their mother is doing a video on that right now. Really? Like I saw it today on, on uh, the YouTube Shorts and different variations of it but everybody's doing no i think it's come away with me that's the one I'm come away with me. yeah but yeah what we're gonna do don't know why it's off her first album that's the one last year that they had a 20th anniversary on did you get your cool lithograph with this yes i did i think it is in there let's see what the lithograph looks like wait until i saw the sun yeah, this album I'm pretty impressed with. Like I said, about a couple weeks ago, actually, John bought it for me. He was at a Target special. Got it, brought it home. I have a CD somewhere in my house. I haven't found it lately, actually. It's pretty sad. But very impressed with the sound quality. Great dynamic range. Very clean. And it can really turn the amp up loud and really enjoy the sonic quality of it. There you go. I could put that up there. Got Nora on your wall. Yeah, I know. There we go. Come on, that's a good picture of her. Absolutely. Yeah, so that sounded really good. Um, so I don't know. What do you what do you think? The, the CD and the phono quality is pretty. They're very close. I agree. On, I think. Yeah, I agree. It is. It is. I thought. I you know I was more of a CD guy recently from the years, and I guess as I moved from the late '80s into the '90s and then up, I have a huge CD collection. And then actually, John kind of got me back into the album side, resurrected the album, resurrected the turntable, and enjoying that now. It's nice having a audio room to be able to listen to it. You're, you're on the edge of the rabbit hole. You better be careful. <laughs> I know. Start collecting and going crazy, right? Before you know it, you're going to have 800 <laughs> albums in your house going, how did this happen? Yeah. This is Lou Donaldson, like I said. Um, it's an excellent album. I actually, this uh, Lou Donaldson is still alive. He's in his late 80s. I don't know if he hit 90 already. Really? Okay. This one's cool because it has, he is a, um, see, I'm going to alto sax player. But they incorporate some congos and things like that. Oh, that'd be good to hear on that. So I think it really, for a jazz album, it, it wakes it up a little bit. Okay, let me cut this and get this off and we'll put that one on. And this is on the blue note. Uh, this is not the Tone Poet series, but it's the um, audiophile vinyl reissues. Just about everything that I found on blue note um, sounds great. All these reissues they're doing are excellent. Yeah, mastered by Kevin Gray from the original analog tapes. So this is interesting. So there's just three tracks on this, on this, huh? 
Uh, well, yeah, it's a jazz album, so yeah. yeah. It, usually, some of those might even only have six songs, five songs. Yeah, yeah. Because they're they're extended, you know, they're not like a standard three and a half minute song. So it's the first one on this one, Blues Walk. I'm looking for more Lou Donaldson. Um, he has a album, I think it's called Gravy Train, that I'm really looking for, but he's hard to find on vinyl right now. Okay, so what do you think? Uh, it's all awesome. I have to find this to add to my collection. Right. John was just, yeah, that, that's true, true jazz, really good. Uh, John just told me that it's very kind of hard to find, probably pricey. I bet, well, harder to find, even more important. But yeah, that really sounds incredible in the system. I mean, that's a great sound, and I'll have to get my hands on one of those for sure. Yeah, as long as you see that Blue Note label. But I think there was <laughs> some in the, they were saying something about some of the reissues they did in the, I can't remember if it was the 70s or 80s to stay away from. Okay. I don't know if those are the true audio files, but mm -hmm. anything they're putting out now that you see in your record store that's sealed that came out recently is going to be excellent. So Blue Note and also their Tone Poet uh, series is the same like amazing, yeah. So we'll head more rock and roll. And you can check out the Beatles Revolver. This is again the new, there's that beer, that new Giles Martin mix that came out last year. Let's I would say Eleanor Rigby. What's, I think that's on side, side one. one, second track. Yeah, do Eleanor Rigby. Um, that's really dynamic. I mean, this whole album is, but that's a good one that you, you might be familiar with, that you oh, might yeah. to see the difference. So I'm watching it, and I don't think it's his record player because we had uh, Lou Donaldson on there. Yeah. See, I'm looking at this sucker moving. You can see the the needle. So I'm just realizing that this, right. this is the problem with some of these new <clears throat> records that we're we're seeing. Even Mo5 opened two box sets on Muddy Waters recently, and the first album was like this. Really? And you're paying some pretty good money yes. for these albums. And they're doing that. I was standing oh, back here so I could really absorb it, and I didn't hear it. But all of a sudden, I'm looking at it, going, "That's wild, yeah." This is where you get anal in the in the vinyl world because yeah, the, you, you well, can't. It is. No, let's see. Let's try to flip it over and see what we get. So yeah, it seems to be playing okay, and this side's not as bad. So I'm wondering if it's warped. Think like on side one, kind of upward, because it's it's kind of going like this on side yeah, one. Look. Yeah, but side two, when you flip it over, yeah. it doesn't seem to be doing the same thing. Yeah, so there must be a, a conical. I don't know. Get your crap together, record companies. I pay too much money for this stuff. Yeah, that's pretty wild, man. You would think you'd pick up on. There's nothing. Everything was clean. All right. So now this one should blow your socks off because. This is supposed to be the ultimate, except for the UHQR. Those are supposed to be, maybe we'll do an unboxing here, because I do have a Miles Davis UHQR, and it's supposed to be the top, the top, the top. Cool, uh, okay. So I welcome that. This should be better than all these, even with the Giles Martin remix and all that stuff. This is supposed to be it. So let's see if we're going to have our socks pulling off. So this is uh, Eric Clapton Unplugged. This thing sounds freaking amazing on my system. I think it's 45 RPM. It's got a sleeve and a sleeve. Yeah, they do a good job with it. They give you all this foam, but then yeah. it, like my Muddy Waters, I got all the foam. I got all these fancy sleeves, and like this one's okay. But the, the seam, it was like split here. Ah, oh, jeez. And the album was like, mm. so I'm like, you know, you get these albums, you're like all excited about it, and next thing you know, it's like, <laughs> you're watching it. Around, like, what the heck? 45 RPM, and I think you should be able to see right through Oh, it. yeah, right? Oh, wow, yeah, absolutely. Let's see right through it. Okay, so safe to say, like, if something's missing off that one, or it just, or what did you think out of that sound? No, no, I think it sounded great. I, I noticed there's a lot of depth to it, like a almost like a, a bass line to it where. I don't know, man. There's no vocals on it. Maybe that was the deal. Yeah. Do you know where? Well, it's, it felt like, and it, we're, we're talking about a live acoustic yeah, album yeah. also. So, so we're, track we're, we're, everything we've been, just track one. Okay. Um, everything
everything we've listened to yeah. so far, especially like Eleanor Rigby, is so full. Oh yeah. Now we're going back down basic raw strip, so it could just be an adjustment that we need to make. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not you're, you're waiting for the vocals and you don't have them. Yeah. So this has vocals. This is side two, side one, lonely stranger. This is a really good song. Scott pushed the button. Here we go. Yeah, sorry, we, uh, we are experiencing technical difficulties. I must be in this Quite good sound and kind of comparing the difference between a live album and a studio album. Well, I think that was the huge thing going from Eleanor Rigby yes. in the studio with, you know, the genius going on there <laughs> and stripping it down to an acoustic. But that sounded good. There was a, I just, you, you, I, you didn't capture it, but. He, Nathan East is playing bass in this, and he ran his finger along here. You could just hear it. Mm. I mean, and I hadn't heard that before, so that's definitely one thing I picked up on your system compared to mine. And, and is that, the little subtleties in there. So that sounded great. That that was really cool. I'm glad I brought this over. So a pretty good variety between the jazz album, studio with the congas. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm digging the congas and the, on the yeah, jazz yeah, one. Yeah. That one really stood out. That's the first thing I noticed about that Lou Donaldson. And I knew I had something different in my hands from the you know, standard jazz albums. Yeah, that's a really good album. Yeah, the whole whole album sounds like that. Okay, so we are going to do an opening. Why not? We're going to open the prints that's been sitting around in the poor little wrapper for about six to seven months now. See, I knew I was going to be doing this, so I brought this little deal. Well, I'll stand out of the way and you can. Yeah, it's going you in your do, direction. You can do the demo. So, yeah, this is uh, Prince and the Revolution. That says love. And there's his symbol. You know, he went by the symbol for a while to get out of that record contract. Legendary concert recorded live March 30th, 85 at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Three LP set pressed on black vinyl. Remixed and remastered from the original multi track master. 16 page book with never before seen photos including smash hits and b-sides from Purple Rain Controversy in 1999. First time on vinyl. So I always open it where I can keep my hype sticker. Oh yeah. I always keep the hype stickers around. I'm one of those guys. We'll just play to that later. So it's not, it's not very thick, but it seems to be doing the job. So let's see. The album's come out like this. Yeah, little card in the back. Oh yeah. Do you do the download thing? Yeah. I don't even use those. I just give them away. So if you oh, want, sure. to, I'll yeah. do it. There you go. So here's the book. Right there. I'll show you guys a couple. And everybody likes to see all the inside. Mm -hmm. So we have Prince there without his shirt and the ribs going. Have you ever seen the Purple Rain movie? Did you ever watch I it? watched a little bit. I can't remember. I think I did, but it's so long ago. I need to watch it again. Probably. Yeah, it's funny because somebody, uh, a boomer, watched it and did a review on Purple Rain. And Prince is kind of a, a butthole in the whole movie. <laughs> he's kind of like getting under people's skin, but he's supposed to be this guy filled with angst because uh, his, his parents are fighting all the time. And, you know, like the, what is it, Dove's Cry, maybe mm -hmm. like my mother. Whole well, thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. It was, it was okay. It was a rock and roll flick. But what are you expecting from Prince? I'm not <laughs> sure he was a great actor, but didn't he do Under a Cherry Moon too? I think that was a movie. Okay, so. I don't know if you guys can see it, sorry, but just trying to give you an idea of what we're looking at. And so it has information, song tracks, all the picks. I guess this is the, is this the book they're talking about? I, think so. I guess this is a 16 page book. That's about right. Yeah. So we have three albums here. So Prince and the Revolution, Love? What they, or does that say live? That's live. Yeah, that's live, right? there. yeah. So maybe that's what that says on there too. Yep. Is, is it's it all live? live? Is yeah, it? okay. It's live. So there's that. There's the back side to it. So what's that got three tracks on it? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. There's a Prince playing a Telecaster. All right, so, so it's side it's F. F. First track, in the Purple Rain, 19 minutes and 25 that's seconds. A, that's the third one, so third that's probably why, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. left over. Um, so Prince playing the Telecaster and playing the piano on the back, and that one has seven tracks on it. And this is the first one. So I kind of showed it to you backwards. Yeah, there we go. But this is the first one. I'll hold it up. So that'd be so, yeah. one, two, and three. 
or you hold them all up together. And you can see it in the lower left corner, Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3. Yep. So let's see, what does it start with? This is, well, Let's Go Crazy is a cool one to start Oh yeah, let's do that. So let's see how this sounds. That was off Purple Rain, Let's Go Crazy. That was a great song. Um, so nice. this one has, wow, this, this first side sounds really good. Let's Go Crazy, Delirious, oh, yeah. 1999, Little Red Corvette, and Take Me With You. That's, That's like every... <laughs> but then we go to side two. Have you ever heard the song Yankee Doodle? I don't know if I have. I don't even know that. Do Me Baby. Okay, this uh, is... Yeah, Irresistible Bitch. <laughs> I don't know that song. It's a minute and 52 seconds. So. Okay, so we're listening to it. We're still on track one. I don't know what... We have mix of, yeah. I think we're feeling the same thing. What, what do you think? Yeah, so to me, what it sounds like, if you could imagine being at a live concert, instead of the first five rows, you're back off the floor in the first 20, 30 rows. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like yeah. they've moved the mics around and the music's behind you. You do not feel like you're in the center. Of the, it doesn't give you that center presence stage. Right. Like clapping, when you, we're sitting here, if I was sitting in my chair, which I have set up to listen to, you could close your eyes and you could think Clapton would sit there. Here, you know you are listening to a recording in a stadium that yeah. doesn't give you that live feel. This, yeah, it, it's live, but it's not the feeling. Yeah, you it, well, it's not produced like okay, let's make this as clean as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This almost feels like it's produced to give you the concert feel. There you go. That's from, a great. From idea. a seat yep. somewhere that's not perfect. Yes. Because yeah, some things are standing out. Like the bass is present. The like, keyboards even were just right. They sounded like they're yeah, back yeah. somewhere. Almost so, like the speak. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the difference between sitting like in a, a perfect mm -hmm. concert front row yeah. or center yeah. to okay, I'm sitting off right to a little mm -hmm. bit or yeah. back and I'm I'm not hearing that speaker the way I should. Be. Yeah. There's no stereo separation. You know, your your true separation where you're hearing, let's say, guitar and bass in the other one, and you know, it comes in with maybe bongos and you're picking that up in your left channel and it transfers to your right. You just you don't get that at all. Yeah. So I don't know how to take it because it doesn't sound bad. No. But it, it's captured a whole different thing that I don't think I'm used to. I agree, because complete the way we walked up, we started with jazz, we walked up to the Beatles, then we went to Clapton in here, and it's like, wow, that's a lot different. Yeah. And Nora Jones, right? We did more. Yeah, 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 yeah. the first Nora Jones. Which would, be a, which would be a very clean recording, too. Right? Yeah, so this... I don't know what to think. I, I kind of <laughs> like it because now I'm in a Prince concert. Yeah. So this is what it would sound. Now it's not horrible. It's not like I've heard bad recordings. No. And I wouldn't call this a bad recording. I think that's just how they captured it. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know the story behind it. Did they just do last minute? Did they plan this? Because um, this is definitely different than a lot of um, live albums that I've listened Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's try one more song on it, actually. Okay. <laughs> So this is a good example of when I got myself transferred more to CD, I of course didn't listen to as much live on CD, but just CD and I, I like that true sonic separation is what I call it. So I don't get that, I get the, the highs with synthesizer with a, you know, a guitar on a high note and then I have my bass, but that mid range is there only for a little bit and it doesn't get muffled. Where here, to me, I hear this album has a lot of the mid, it's because it's live and it's picking up. You've got the stadium noise, you've got the crowd noise, and the way they've recorded it. I think they recorded it, again, I don't know how live is recorded, but are they standing out in the, I mean, is it on sound soundstage or off on soundstage? Well, You're getting that mid-range mix. Yeah, I think they do a little bit of each. Like they're they're plugging these instruments straight into the mm -hmm. board, but they also have like those ambience yep. uh, type microphones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that collect all that sound to go with it. Yep. This, yeah, this is. I'm trying to wrap my head around how it's to very, it. very different. I mean, completely different of the sound. Yeah, and it's not. It doesn't get distorted. It just. It's almost like when the whole band kicks in. They're almost like on the same yeah. volume yes, level, almost, yes. and they just blend. Yes. So there's not that separation, yeah. but that's what you get at a concert. True. You know when you what your ears are hearing. Right. So I think they did a great job of capturing the concert. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a a clean concert experience where it almost sounds like a studio album, this is not the one. Yeah, that, that's it. a good way to describe if it. If you want to be in the concert, this is really good. I'm actually yeah. now that I kind of understand it or. 
you know, we've listened to enough of it, you know, two songs, but it feels like I'm in the Prince concert. Yeah, it does. I, I can tell you, when you think back, personally, me for going in the 1980s, when you would go to a concert, you would wait, you'd hear the cheer, you know, the song comes yeah. on first, keep it, oh, and then the crowd goes crazy, and you get that aura. Or sometimes that's music. louder than yeah. the music. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of what happens. Yes. There's a yes. point where the crowd distorts the music. Yes. And, you know, for an audiophile, their, their eardrums are going to blow out and bleed, and, <laughs> and they're going to run and yeah. throw Yeah, this is records. not, you know, hey, let no. me show you my system. Oh, it sounds all... all that's awesome. not this. To me, it's like, here's the mid-range that this produces. Right. Now, we grand... We, we, when that song we didn't, you can't play, of course, but you can hear the keyboards and you have the nice high. Because the keyboard was really yeah. clear. And then the bass, yeah. Yeah. But then when he starts singing, and you can even hear that it's not a perfectly mixed because it's live and it wouldn't yeah. be because it's not a studio album. Right. Right. So you get that. Hey, Prince isn't perfect sounding like we heard on the radio because it wasn't like that. It right. wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. This is live. This yeah. Is when he was doing as good as he could when he signed. So when they say live, they mean live. That's live. I think this. <laughs> I think it's cool with. Yeah, it, it is. is. It if is. If you want, you know, Prince had energy. You know, he was a performer. So I think this captures that that energy and the audience and everything. But you just have to understand what you're getting into when you get this. Yes. It. Yes. So. Yeah, yes. that's cool. It is good. Very good. Yeah, I think we had a good variety of things mm -hmm. as far as to show um, between studio, live, two live performances, one more acoustic, one full band. So, well, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. I did a good job picking you stuff did. up. <laughs> no, awesome. you did. Or yeah. this is maybe like an ACDC or something, heavy metal. I have a Van Halen mm -hmm. out. We can try it on another one. Okay. One thing that we were thinking about doing, and I have to find this and make bits of two, is find the CD, you can have a CD plan. And then we could put the album on and compare the two. Yep. You know, maybe we side got by side, a yeah. track, a track that you hear and it has a lot of. I mean, Gabriel, Peter Gabriel might be good because yeah. you may find that on the CD you hear some, but on the album you may hear some different, yeah. different depths and stuff. That'd be worth trying out. We, we should try the, it out. The Nora Jones, which you already have both mm -hmm. of, right? Yeah. And yeah. I have the album. This. Okay. Uh, there we go. That'd be great. So I can bring yeah. that. Anything else you want to no, share? No, no. System or? Hey, thanks for listening. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, anything that you might want us to try out now, it's kind of cool. We've got some different ways to do things. Feel free to ask. We'll try them out. Any suggestions on any albums you might want to hear? Yeah, leave it in the comments below. And um, yeah, this was cool. It's, it's cool getting out of my house and being with somewhere I can actually stand and walk around. I'm always sitting at my desk and I feel like the energy is not there. And so thanks for inviting me the first time. I look forward to many more. It's the first time I've ever done this and uh, yeah, love to, love to participate some more. Yeah, I think we came up with some good ideas here. Yeah, absolutely. So we should be getting a million hits off this. So tell your friends about it. At least it. a million, a million and one. Yeah, <laughs> a million point. Yeah, that'd be good. So, all right, well, yeah, leave the comments below. If there's anything, um, any questions you have or any of your experiences about these albums, definitely let me know. And uh, until next time, you guys enjoy your music and you take care, all right? Have a good night. See ya. Good night. Thanks.